My Aunt Dorothy arrived in India just after Thanksgiving, 1957. Her job assignment would take her to Madras on the East Coast, but for the first several weeks, she traveled between Delhi and several other major cities, attending various meetings with her colleagues from the RCA project. By the way, RCA stands for Research Cum Action. The last day of the year found Dorothy in Singur, where she and about 30 others celebrated New Year's Eve together. In her journal, she left a wonderful account of the festivities. January 1st, 1958. The New Year started at Singer last night and climaxed a party for RCA conference participants. Six Americans and four or five times as many Indians. The party was a semi-planned entertainment. Some people volunteered in advance to sing a song or tell a joke. Dr. Sen, the Singer RCA project director gave continuity in rhythm. He sat barefooted on a table playing the tabla, two skin-covered drums. He has a daughter studying music in college, and he said he took up this hobby when she was 12, and taking dance lessons, she begged him to learn to accompany her being able to refuse his daughter nothing. He learned the art, which he obviously enjoys tremendously and is very skilled indeed. The wife of the Poonamali health educator began the party with a throaty and plaintive Indian song. The party ended with the group singing Auld Lang Syne. One doctor planned a game of forfeits using newspaper ads which were to be identified or the individual had to entertain the group. In this manner, everyone got into the act. There was a game of musical chairs to Dr. Sen's rhythm and two different follow the leader games, both of which I've played at home. In one, a person who is it leaves the room. When he returns, a leader has been chosen and the circle is following a, the leader in some type of seated activity, like clapping the hands. The activity changes from time to time, and the person who is it tries to find out who the leader is, who the others follow. The other was a very active game with the leader going around in a circle, picking people to follow in stunts like skipping or hopping. When he says go, Everyone tries to get a chair, but one doesn't, there being one chair too few. The person without a chair becomes the leader. These games calling for active participation made the party. The entire group sang some rounds, and the hillbilly, she's, she'll be coming around the mountain. Some individual contributions were especially nice. A Sikh anthropologist did a dance. He said it typified the boisterous gaiety of the people from the Punjab. It resembled an American Indian war dance, but was happy rather than hostile. When asked to repeat it, Dr. Rice, a tall, gangling American at a Christian medical college in Ludhiana, helped. Dr. Rice also sang an English folk song in Hindi, taking first the part of the woman and then the man. One person read a poem by Tagore, which was beautiful in sound and alliteration. Dr. Joseph sang The Lost Chord and a Christmas Hymn. All agreed it was a lovely evening. Many people over the world were paying high prices to be entertained, but none had more fun than we. Without liquid refreshments, we felt good the next morning, too. The refreshments were a box of English crackers and a fruitcake, which a Calcutta friend gave to Mary Champlin.
Thank <laughs> you.